Hello Gemini friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Gemini October 2021 Astrology Must Knows. This is the horoscope for Gemini. We're going to talk about October, but we're also going to get a sneak peek into November and December. This video is for you if Gemini is your sun sign or your moon sign or your rising sign, or even if you have other placements in Gemini like Mercury, Venus, Mars, which you can run a free birth chart online in order to see if you have any of those placements. And if you do, then this report is part of your astrological picture. If you're a late degree Gemini, so like June 11 through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees, then I also suggest that you watch my cancer reports as well because you cuspy people have a more complex read and you'll get pieces from both the Gemini and the cancer reports. If you want even more information and more free goodies that I make for you each month, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. And if you fit, forget that link, you can just click on the little more button with the arrow underneath the video and all of these links are there for you to see. So Gemini, I am very rowdy to talk about the things that I am seeing in your chart. We're going to talk about so many things this month. As usual, I spare no details because I want you to be fully equipped to make the most of the energies this month. Later on, after we talk about lots of Gemini specific things, I have a beautiful visual timeline for you talking about the Mercury retrograde in the shadow and the eclipses and the eclipse season starting and the Venus retrograde in the shadow and kind of helping you understand, especially this golden period of launches and golden opportunities that's going to come in November and a lot of October is going to be in preparation of that. So we'll talk about all of that later. We'll also talk about the ending of the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse cycle, which we're going to talk more about in specific for Geminis now, but we'll give you some dates as to when that happened before and when this cycle has been at play. And we'll talk about about the new cycle, the Taurus Scorpio cycle, and the dates that that happened before to kind of start to prep you. And of course, in November and December reports, we'll go into exactly where those are going to hit for you. Okay, so why am I so worked up about stuff for Gemini right now? The first reason is because it is the end of a karmic era for you. You have had the nodes, the no transiting north and south nodes, which rule your karma and your dharma, what you came here to experience, what your highest expression is, what those things are that are keeping you from your highest expression. Those are epitomized by the energies of the eclipses. The transiting north and south nodes are always in the same sign as the running eclipse cycle. Okay, so they're, they're, they work together and that has been in Gemini and um, Sagittarius. So since around March 2020, which, wow, that should ring a bell, right? We had a lot of stuff go on in the world in March 2020, and that was the same time the eclipse season for the Gemini Sagittarius eclipse cycle opened. Okay, so now at this time, October, November, December, we're closing out a major karmic cycle for Geminis. That means you've had the opportunity to clear the decks. Sometimes that's been through very difficult experiences. Sometimes that's been through amazing enlivening experiences, brand new shiny opportunities and think dreams being fulfilled. And we're at the end of this cycle now where a lot of these things are going to wrap up and you're going to start seeing the news of what those final chapters are going to look like starting here in October. Okay, so what kind of things are happening? You are reevaluating everything in your life, what you're doing here, what you wanna be doing here, what your purpose is, what you wanna do for your vocation or your work, or how you wanna show up in the world if you don't need to make income, how you wanna be in relationships, the type of relationships you have. You've been evaluating your relationships, what's great about them, what needs improvement. You've had opportunities to clear out the karma that you've had with individuals. You've also had, and you will have very much this month, the chance to let your voice be heard very loud. This energy has been very much about finding your voice and sharing your voice in small ways, in big ways, and a lot of it has to do with information. Gemini people are masters at taking in information and disseminating information through education, through all other types of means. You're a natural teacher, and a lot of this education storyline has been coming up into the forefront, and you are looking for ways to share your voice with the world and to share your gifts with the world. There are so many Geminis that are going to be finding hidden talents at this time. The way that you find hidden talents is by going into things that maybe you've never done before. I had a weird experience doing um, felting. Felting is a, an interesting type of art that's done with um, you know, a needle and, and felt and it's 
I would have never in a million years stopped. I don't really have time to do a lot of felting and I would have never done it, but the opportunity came to me through something with my family and I took it and it turns out I love it and I'm actually really good at it and I would have never done that if I wouldn't have tried it. Okay, so this is an example that if you follow something that you're interested in or an opportunity that someone says, hey, you wanna try this, hey, you wanna do this, and generally Gemini people are pretty open. You know, we're, we're mutable signs. I say we because I'm a Sag and Gemini and Sag are both mutable signs. And we're usually very agreeable, right? So if someone says, hey, are you interested in that? You get curious, right? That's a keynote of Gemini. You're curious, you're interested, you'll try stuff, and so that, way of being is going to work really well for you, especially at this time, because you have a crowded fifth house. Your fifth house has to do with your creative juices. It has to do with hobbies, hobbies that can always stay hobbies, hobbies that can spur hidden talents, and hobbies that can turn into paid work. Okay, if you're a Gemini that is not getting to use your variety and your intellectual nature and your, um, your interests in your work, then opportunities are going to be bursting out for you to be finding sideways to do this. And at some point, maybe it's going to be coming soon, you can make those hobbies or things that are fun into your work. This is a very major paradigm shift that's happening, complements of what's gone on with COVID and all of the corresponding um, starry connections that have you know, spurred this whole experience for humanity, where people are asking the questions more deeply, and especially for Sages and Geminis at this time, or people with those placements, because of the alignments of the eclipses, do you love your work? You know, if not, how can you love it? And what what do you need to know there? You know, what stages are you at in finding more fulfillment within your vocation or within how you're sharing with the world, whether it you need to make money or not? Something else that's really coming up for a Gemini's at this time has to do with lessons with friendships and holding your boundaries within your friendships. Again, this is like Gemini's are friendly, they're agreeable, and sometimes that can get you into some trouble or get you off track if your friends are like, I wanna do this or let's do this or I have an idea about this. And so you're like, okay, yeah, let's try that. So now is a period of time where you're starting to see where that has gotten you and where you might need to hold some more boundaries and say, actually, no, that's not my thing. I don't really resonate with that. I love you as a friend, but I don't really want to participate in that. And you start setting the boundaries. And then it works out, you know? Unfortunately, the aspect with Chiron that is bringing a lot of this into the forefront is making a nice angle for your placement. So that generally means that really good outcomes can come from you realizing that there are some differences between you and your peers. There are some differences between you and the other people close to you. And you don't have to make a huge thing of the differences, but you do have to find those places where it's better for you to not burst out of those um, that set space, okay? So let's see what else is going on. Um, yeah, something else that's happening is that you're starting to have more of a spiritual agenda. You know, things that were fulfilling for you from the mundane experience might be a little bit more boring at this point. And you might be looking for some more substance in the, the people that, you know, you might be wanting to coax that out of the people that you're with, or you might be wanting to hang out with groups of people that are asking some different types of questions, not to put any judgment on the other groups, you know, it's just a little something different that's being added to the mix here, which has to do with the energy of Neptune. And Neptune has to do with dissolution and addiction versus spiritualization. So Neptune is seeking to dissolve away those connections with people or with groups that don't feel like they're spiritually sound for you. All right, so that's this is a very long-term thing that has been going on that is important to note. Something else that's a major must-know for Geminis has to do with this, um, this fact that we have more salty aspects this month than sweet ones, okay? So if you want a list of all the salty and sweet aspects, the dates, what you can expect from them, what the aspects are, delivered into your inbox one month early, definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter because that is one of the things I send out to my email group. But to make a long story short, 
from since June, June, July, August, September, October, we've had more salty aspects than sweet ones. And we have felt that. they are bumps in the road when we're trying to have a free flow. That combined with the retrograde energies definitely have been putting a little bit of a wrench in the natural flow that Geminis like to have. But this month, as I'm calling the theme of this month, the big wake up, Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, and Mercury are all moving from their retrograde position to their direct position. So the first part of the month is definitely part of the time where we're not really feeling a lot of clarity, where we're going into emotion, where we're going into looking at those blocks that are keeping you from having the success that you want, keeping you from moving forward with the things that you really want to pursue. And then the latter part of the month is very much in the direct energies. And then as we get into November in that golden period, the, the tides are definitely shifting and you've got this period of time before Venus is going to go retrograde because Venus rules love and beauty and money and there's a lot to know there. You can search for Annie Botticelli Venus Retrograde and I have a ton of resources if you wanna get a sneak peek there. But we'll talk about the timelines here in the next segment. But it's important to know now that October might not be meant for clarity. And so if you don't have clarity, then don't worry about it. You also might have a lot of blasts from the past. Friends that you have seen, haven't seen, might come from the past, family from the past. This time is still very centered around relationships because September, October into November, we've got the Libra, then Scorpio uh, planetary movements, and those are all about relationships. Those are all about friendships, deep relationships with money, your finances, all of that are coming into the forefront. One of the single most challenging things that interfere with Gemini's having good health is your tendency to exhaust yourself with physical movement and or mental movement, okay? Gemini's are one of the big mental spinners. I mean, this is a human thing that we do. Everybody does this as humans. But Geminis are one of the masters at spinning yourself out with your mind, thinking of all the possibilities, and then spinning yourself into inactivity or kind of procrastination because you think so much about everything and talk so much about everything that when it comes time to do it, now you're not really sure what to do. So something that I have seen to be very helpful with this is called white chestnut Bach flower remedy. Bach flower remedies are so wonderful because they're so benign. I've used them with newborns and you know kids and pets and every kind of person <laughs> and animal and they're so gentle and so helpful where they vibrationally help to support you in ways that that's hard to articulate but they work really well I mean, really the only thing you have to worry about with them is that they are generally alcohol um, based so if there's somebody that's sensitive to alcohol you just want to be careful, but you are only diluting a couple of drops in a bunch of water, so you'd have to be pretty sensitive to the alcohol, but I just wanted to mention that. But white chestnut Bach flower remedy, B-A-C-H flower remedy, is something you can put in your water every day, and it can tame that mental spinning that goes on on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, let's see what else I wanted to talk about here. Um, okay, so you can use those jolts in the in the road, like the roadblocks, the bumps that you go across with these salty aspects that are happening this month to help jostle you out of your paradigms that aren't working, jostle you out of your um, complacency. This is a time when Geminis who had fallen into comfort, call, fallen into ease, fallen into complacency, you might start having some inner deep feelings awakening where you're getting some zest brewing to take some major action. Now this month, unless it's towards the end, this month might not be the best month to do, to carry out the big things that you're wanting to. This is the time to gather strength, to gather your certainty, to clear up old clutter, old messes, tie up loose ends for your big launch and push in November. Okay, because this is a time where you might be making some big decisions involving your branding of yourself, your decision of who you're going to be and what you're going to do. Your relationships might be, you know, going into a very positive direction or ending. You know, there's, when you're redefining yourself, sometimes you have to take space to establish that space. You know, at the time that I was starting to wake up to my gifts and my work and doing writing and healing and astrology, I was a pharmaceutical rep and I had a real estate business on the side where I was buying, selling, refurbishing and renting homes. And then I had this, this awakening where 
I was like, wow, actually, okay, yes, I'm a business person. Yes, at this point, I'm a pharmaceutical rep. Yes, you know, I'm a, I'm a landlord. But I started feeling within me this new definition of how I wanted to be known. But people that knew me were like, okay, well, Annie is, you know, a real estate business person. She's a pharmaceutical rep and she's this. And I'm like, well, actually, I am a channel for divine wisdom. I am an astrologer. I am a writer. I am, you know, somebody that is focusing on inspiring people to do, to claim their best life. And that became more real for me. So at that time, I moved to a place and lived for a decade in a place where people spoke my language. And I established myself as all of those things that I felt brewing. And this is something that many, many, many people with Gemini placements are going to have. You're going to be known for something else, be seen as something else. Also, what was happening for me at that time, you know, in, in that those years, is that I was a party animal and my friends and I would tear it up. And that was part of the lifestyle that we had in the imprint that everybody that I knew was was doing. And I started seeing like, wow, that is not going to help me get into my highest expression. That is not going to work for me. And I started separating myself from that. But everybody I knew, except for a few people who are like my bestest friends now, still were doing those things. And so I had to make a clean break and surround myself with the types of things, not any judgment on the old way, just that I wasn't having resonance with it anymore. And this is very much what is happening for so many people with Gemini placements, that the way that you were known, the things that you did, the things that you could have been doing for decades are maybe not who you really feel is the truth of who you are or who you wanna be. And you're going to have to be taking some steps to surround yourself by the people that are speaking the language that you're wanting to do more of, who are willing to acknowledge you in as the person, as the uh, with the labels, with the stories, with the definition of who you want to be, and surrounding yourself by people who will be supportive of where you're going with that. So this is just a big, big time. So you'll see in this October, November, December, you know, you might be making some of those big moves. And again, if you are planning on doing something like that, literally for a move or literally for launching into something else or literally for, you know, stepping into new groups, into new paradigms, you might see some of this awakening in October, but for making your big clarity driven, oomph driven moves, November is going to be better for that. So let's talk about this November golden opportunity, what the dates are there, how these um, cycles of the eclipses and the retrogrades are intermeshing and what that flow looks like so that you can gear up for your big decisions and align them with the stars. Okay, so to understand the theme, the big wake up for October, 2021, it's easier I think to see it in a visual um, context and also to understand October compared to November and December and what we've got going on in this cluster of time will help you to better understand the energy of this month. All right, so the first thing of note that we've got going on is that these outer planets are waking up. So Pluto on October 6th, Saturn on the 11th, Jupiter on the 18th, and then we've got Mercury also waking up. This is an inner planet, but we've still been in this Mercury retrograde period, um, you know, since September. So the energy for the first half or so of the month is very much retrograde, okay? And then every day, 19th, 20th, 21st, every day we march into October, later in the month, these energies that just woke up start to get stronger, all right? So by the time we're at November 3rd, Mercury retrograde is clear and we enter this golden period of the 3rd through the 17th before the Venus shadow period starts Venus shadow starts November 18th, gets stronger as the month of November goes on. Venus goes retrograde on December 19th. Okay, so you can see this time between November 3rd and the 17th is this golden opening where these planets are, have gained a lot of momentum. Mercury is completely strong. Venus has not yet started to slip. So now 
Now that we understand this, we'll get back to some of these other pieces here. Let's talk about the retro energies and direct energies and how you use them differently. So basically, the first half of October, we'll say through, of course, the 18th, because that's when everything goes direct. It's very strong in this. And this lingers throughout October, but it starts to get lighter and lighter as the month goes on. And as the month goes on, it gets more into these energies. And then the 3rd through the 17th of November is really, really strong with this energy, okay? So in retrograde time, we want to deal with what comes up more rather than trying to do future planning or, you know, think too much ahead. We want to clear out clutter in any area of our lives, our health, our relationships, our houses, our desk. We want to leave things unscheduled because last minute magic can show up and the more space you have to receive it, the better. This is a fantastic time for research, not as much the big launches and decisions and agreements and all of this stuff, um, unless it's unavoidable, but researching these things and making you know um, your pros and cons list, getting information so that you can strike when the iron's hot. The retro time, so you know it's basically all of October, but especially through around the 18th, we want to wrap up loose ends and finish old projects. Also, retrogrades are known for confusion where you can't see that far ahead. You're not sure about what you want to do with any of these kind of things, you know. Um, and if you know that that's, that's happening, then it's okay because you know that it's likely going to clear. It's a time to be in the moment and it's a time to honor the flow and, and not force anything. Now, as we get later in October, you'll start to feel the clarity coming back, especially once we get into November, the zest and ideas for new projects, things like big launches, like getting your book out, your creative babies of any sort, your big decisions, your agreements, your paperwork, your investing, your moves, anything like that, future planning, and that back to push and initiate mode away from the don't force mode is another important change that starts to evolve as October goes on. And the more you can do these things in this November 3rd through 17th, 3rd through 17th, you'll have all of the oomph of the direct motion. And I always liken this, this time to when the tide is going out. Retrograde is like when the tide is going in. If you try to push a message in a bottle out on the shore, you know, to go out to the sea, it's probably going to come bobbing right back to you. That's why these things are better indicated in the retrograde time. But as we move into the direct time, it's time to put your boat afloat, to have the, the action of the tides going out, you know, to put your bottle out to sea, to, to, to put all of your energy out there because you have oomph. Now, as we get into the 18th, the tides from the Venus perspective start slowly rolling in, okay? But there is quite a bit of usable, what I call usable energy for the rest of November. And I'm just giving you this little sneak peek to understand this, even though we're talking about October, because October is more in this retrograde mode. And then November is more in this direct mode, you see? So this will help you to better guide your actions in October to understand the energies of November more. But you will have some usable energy for the rest of November. You just have to use it w with caution. And you, if you want to get a sneak peek about this, we'll talk about this more in the November report. But look for Annie Botticelli Venus Retrograde. I have a whole Venus and Retrograde blog series. I've got a really great detailed video. And um, also my book, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe, has a very big section on these Venus retrograde energies. Okay, so now back to this energy in October, we also have at the beginning of the month, eclipse season is beginning, okay? Because the first eclipse is November 19th, but eclipse season starts around four to six weeks before the actual eclipse. So that places us right back here at the beginning of October. Okay, so besides this big wake up for these outer planets and Mercury, we've got eclipse season beginning. So, you know, those life changing pieces of information, those life changing experiences, those very big goodbyes, those very big hellos. And this is a very big wrap up because 
this season holds the last eclipse in the Sagittarius Gemini um, cycle. So what we're wrapping up here, and this energy is starting to make itself manifest in October, which is why we're talking about it now, the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse cycle has been in effect since around March 2020. And everybody remembers that month will go down in infamy when the world shut down. So things wrapping up at this time. Also, if you want to have some context, you can think back. So basically, it was the, the eclipse cycle was from May 2020, but again, the four to six week period started us in March through around January of 2022. Okay, so we're here in October, we're starting to get the pieces falling together of closing out this cycle. If you want to have context as to when the last time that cycle happened, the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse cycle, it was around 2010 to 2012. So you might see some similar storylines that came up at that time. Now what we're starting in this new cycle is the Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle. And of course, we'll go into way more details about this in the November and December reports when the actual eclipses occur, but it's important for you to know these things now because the eclipse season starts in early October. So think back to the end of 2002 and um, to like through 2003 and then the second half of 2012 to early 2014. <clears throat> then we've got now August 2021 through the end of 2023. And the reason why we have August here is because we do start to see a few months even before the eclipse cycle begins that sometimes little hints will come in. So that's very, very sensitive, you know, um, might be harder to see that energy. So we'll just put it back to October 2021 through the end of 2023 is the Taurus Scorpio cycle. So the things that are coming in now are going to really big, be big players through the end of 2023. And we'll go into details about exactly where that hits in your chart um, in the November and December reports. For our purposes for October, just know that it's a big wrap up of the old eclipse cycle and the big beginning of the new eclipse cycle as this eclipse season starts this month. Okay, so I've given you lots of information to help you make the most of October 2021 and beyond. If you would like even more information, definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. That is the interface for all of the things that I do for you each month, the connection to my podcast and my Pinterest and my school and my blogs and all of that you can find there. If you would like to be an astrologer as your profession or just to do it to help your friends and family and yourself, you will love my becoming a professional astrologer mastery course. If you think I put a lot of details into these monthly reports, month after month, year after year, you should see what goes on, the comprehensive nature of that course, which you can see at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E, life.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.